So hi everybody and welcome to our little webinar today. We're going to be chatting about on-site search and how site search can be really, really cool if you are actually an SEO, not only a user experience professional. I am going to share my screen and we'll jump straight into it. So I have a burning question for you all. Which offers the better user experience? Linked-based navigation or on-site search? It seems as there always he's, it seems as though there's always been a battle between these two. People are inclined to either underestimate the power of the site search box, or on the flip side, think that placing a search box on their page will solve all of their UX navigational issues. But in reality, you actually need both because some of your users will prefer to browse and some to search. And more importantly, at some point, you're going to encounter something I love to call the content paradox. It's the more quality content your site has, the more useful that site is, but the harder it becomes to find that good content. Not every single product or article or other content piece can have its own submenu, and not every visitor will happily spend their time exploring via a category-led journey. Searchers are looking for a specific category or topic, sometimes even an exact product or service, and they want to know within one click if you have it. But we often see search boxes being rarely used. But this may not be so much a comment on a user's desire as much as the functionality and design of your site. How prominent is that search box in your design? Can the experience it offers meet the expectations users have of search that have been generated by the fantastic experiences provided by search engines like Google? And if not, what you may find is people are actually turning to those search engines and combining your domain name with whatever they're looking for. Now, when we talk about optimizing site search, first, the thing you need to do, the first thing you need to do is to get more people to actually use it. You need to understand that there's no one right user interface for a site search box. You'll need to A-B test the different variations to find out which style suits your audience best. But having said that, there are some common best practices which can be a launch pad for you to get started. And the first of those best practices is the placement of your search bar because the placement is going to dictate the search bar's usage rates. So there's no best spot for all websites, but users are typically going to look for the site search box in the top right or top middle on desktop, and as its own line, the entire width of the screen within the header on mobile. Make sure you're not hiding your site search box in a drop down or hamburger menu. Don't place it too near other boxes like newsletter sign up fields. Don't have it as nothing more than a small icon that has to be clicked for the text field to actually expand. Secondly, a best-in-class search experience really does start with the form itself. It should be immediately obvious what that search box field does. This is often achieved by pairing a text prompt with a magnifying glass icon or a button labeled search or find. The label go has very much fallen out of favor because it isn't really clear what is going to happen when I click that button. Another thing you can do is use placeholder text within the search box field to simultaneously affirm that yes, this is in fact a search bar and to guide visitors about what they can search for on your site. So you can have prompts like search today's news or find events or enter your product name here or you can even use open-ended questions such as, what are you looking for? But if you really want to take it to the next level, then you can add predictive search. This speeds up the search process, improves the search input quality by guiding the query construction and offers clues to your site's range of content. But all of these things don't mean anything if the search results aren't actually helpful when I see them. 
Having no site search function is better than having one that gives searchers a false impression of the availability of content on your site. Start with the look and feel of those site search result pages because the visualizations can be just as important as the quality of the results themselves. Search result pages should follow a similar style as a category page, being sure you keep that search query within the search box to allow for easy refinement or amendments. You also want to add the search query in the headline and maybe even add the relevant query elements in bold within the site search result pages. The next thing you're gonna to want to do is make sure you're actually delivering on what the users asked for. It's really frustrating to have typed a long tail query into a search box for half of that query to be seemingly ignored. Returning too many search results can really frustrate the users who may begin to question why they even bothered to use search in the first place. In addition to this, similar to with Google SERPs, there's often a marked drop off after the first page of results. One way to ensure your results are truly relevant is by utilizing semantic search. This is going to analyze the context and intent behind the query and so be able to process it much more like a human would than just looking for certain keywords within the phrase. But sometimes there are actually no results to display. If this is the case, please handle it more gracefully than the infamous no results found message. Or worse, blaming the searcher by asking them, oh, go and check your spelling, please, or refine your search query, it was too broad. If visitors believe you don't have what they're looking for, they will just leave. Worse, they leave frustrated, making it less likely they will choose to engage with your brand in the future. It's better to apologetically state that there are no results available and propose a valuable next step. This could be in the form of alternative search suggestions, contextual category links, broader matching content, or details to contact support. I mean, some websites do choose to show top searches or promote selected content or list all of their categories, but these options don't really recognize the searcher's intent and so they're much less valuable. But the key message here is that any next step is better than a dead end. But I know most of you didn't come here to talk about usability tips, you came here to talk about SEO. And I know when I say SEO in the context of site search, the good old Google dogma comes up that they don't like to index search result pages. This means that the prevailing SEO approach has been to prevent crawling and indexing of site search result pages. But that advice was given 10 years ago. And in 2019, Google is more than happy to index and rank site search result pages. And many brands have been taking advantage of this for years. I mean, if you just take a look at Wayfair in Ahrefs, it ranks 41% of its traffic from site search result pages. The problems arise when it's believed that on-site search SEO is as simple as changing the no index tag to an index. But this really opens up the floodgates and creates an indexable page for whatever term the user has entered. And people do search like no one is watching. Now, of course, pages like these are unlikely to be triggered in the wild, the point is that while some relevant search pages will rank and bring in users, there's likely to be an iceberg worth of low quality pages below the surface dragging down the SEO dark ages of one keyword per page, which creates duplicate content if you have an existing category. But then the user searches for that term and another indexable page is created. It all fulfills the same intent. This is not a good way to structure your website. So you need an SEO strategy to handle this, one that optimizes pages based on the balance between topic demand and the content supply. If there are a significant number of search queries around a topic over a relevant time pattern, 
content to satisfy the user intent, then you should create an indexable static URL for that topic in the relevant location within your site taxonomy. This could be as a category, a subcategory, or as a filter on an existing category. Now, this page should then have all relevant queries redirected to it. And relevant queries, I'm talking about including singular, plural, and other stemming variants, common misspellings, typos, synonyms, abbreviations, alternate terms, any numbers or special characters, stop words, all of these Similar keywords belong to a single topic, a single intent, a single URL. You should not be processing queries based on their face value, but rather based on the context of their intent. By directing all of these queries to a single topical page within the category tree, you're going to prevent the possibility of that duplicate content hurting your site. Now, what about the second case where I've got a low amount of queries, but a lot of content for that? In this case, what I'm going to do is create a search engine indexable page, but on a dynamic parameter based URL, because this is not going to be included in the navigational site taxonomy. This allows those long tail topics to reach relevant audiences through organic ranking, but keeps the navigational taxonomy nice and lean. And if at any point these pages do pass that volume threshold, you can just implement a 301 redirect to a static URL within your site taxonomy. And finally, what do you do if you don't have content to satisfy the intent? Well, then you need to gracefully handle that zero results page with a no index tag to prevent user generated content spam ending up in the Google search engine result pages and dragging down your domain quality. But it's not just direct growth in organic sessions that can be a benefit of a well optimized on site search. The data it collects holds, holds a wealth of actionable insights for SEOs. The usage report helps you understand to what extent users took advantage of your internal site search function and how effectively the search results create deeper engagement within your site. Use these metrics to quantify the potential KPI impact of site search optimization. It's very common that visits with site search show significantly lower bounce rates, higher time on site and more pages per session and most importantly, more conversions. The search term report, it shows you what people are looking for. And more importantly, it shows you if your site's actually delivering on those queries. You can use this search terms report to guide site content as terms with high unique searches and high search exit rates show what content visitors want that is not yet provided or that can't be easily found. Use this as an inspiration for article topics, product range offerings, category additions, navigational elements, or content to feature on your homepage. You can also use this to mine for keywords. Terms searched on your website are likely correlated to those your target audience has entered in search engines. So you can use these terms as keywords for your PPC campaigns. The search pages report shows where searches begin and the search results, where searches actually begin to look for search results. Um, you can use these pages to identify navigational issues. If the start page is outside of the home page, it indicates areas where your visitors are getting lost in their navigational journey and turn to site search for help. This is also an area where you can be a little bit more trendy. Search destination pages with a high total unique searches and a low search exit rate show what your customer base is currently interested in. These trendy pages can be pushed by other channels, such as email or social media, with the knowledge that they're likely to perform very well. In addition to basic site search reporting, you can also set up a Google Analytics event to track queries that triggers the no result page and uses the data to inform your content strategy. And Another event to track all redirected queries. 
because Google Analytics site search report relies on the URL parameter, which obviously no longer exists for those redirected queries. Now, I do walk my talk. I run similar optimizations on my own websites. And this is what I've learned from my two most recent tests. For our news websites, 34% of people are just too lazy to click through night site navigation. 43%, the topic wasn't actually linked in the site search navigation, and we had no evergreen page. So our rankings rose and fell based on time limited articles. And for 23% of the content that our users wanted from our website, we just didn't offer that to our audiences. I also run a lot of classifieds websites. And here the data was interesting, but for a very different reason. We often had the content that the users wanted, but the taxonomy namely rarely matched to how users described what they wanted to buy. Because for category names, we use general grouping terminology like shelving and storage, while users described it in much more specific terms like wardrobe. And we weren't offering enough attributes so where people were looking for, where we thought people were just looking for TVs, they were actually looking for 32 inch TVs and they couldn't navigate to that because we didn't offer filters for that type of content. The key takeaway here is don't let site search be an afterthought. Not only is it a way to improve user experience, it can also drive organic sessions and has a powerful reporting tool function where it can deliver clear data to marketers on consumer habits and on potential content voids. Um, if you want to ask any questions, please do so. Um, Serpstat says that they will reply later on. Um, and if not, thank you very much for tuning in and goodbye. Thank <laughs> you.